VCR party. Where's Steve? I'm worried about Steve. Oh, Me too. No. Must have oh. It. oh no. <laughs> All right. Welcome everybody to VCR party show where we watch VHS tapes. I'm Joe. That's Nick. That's George. And finally there's Steve. And this is the show where we watch um, VHS tapes. We have 11,000 of them and we watch all of them every single day. That's what we do. Yeah. We try to get through them all. And Joe, you are uh, predictably not in the office today. Where are you today? St. Louis. I got a college show tomorrow at St. Louis. Uh, where, yeah, so I'm here, and I'm going to catch a Cardinals game tonight. And so we got to oh. make this snappy. Okay. All, right. All yeah. right. Let's do it. We'll keep us on task. Do you want to start with a font footage classic? Let's do it. <laughs> you caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Okay. This is the legendary. Iowa desk and couch. Now, the reason I picked this one, I was because today it's state jingle day and we are going to uh, focus on Iowa. And so I thought I would set the scene by showing an Iowa clip to get you in the mood for Iowa commercials and Iowa jingles. And this was given to us by our buddy, Dan Opsel, who's the flub master. He's on every, he's, he's probably due for a, an appearance. I have a, I have a lot of flubs all saved up. Spring is in, the, or I mean, the fall, it's the fall season. You think football, you think hot cocoa and pumpkin spice and you think the Floodmaster? we gotta have him back exactly we gotta have the Floodmaster back but anyway Floodmaster gave us this um it, he was working for a student television station and uh they decided to have on a local psychic and he said it, when it was happening it was terrible but then when he looked back on it he was just like oh that was the best decision i ever made so uh anyway so this is uh, i think her name is patricia and she's a local psychic in the iowa city area and she was on iowa dusk and couch here we go. Hi, I'm here with Trisha from Tarot and Astrology, and she's been so kind as to come in and give us a reading, a tarot reading. And um, so let's let's get right to it. What exactly is tarot, and how do you use it to predict one's future and all that jazz? <laughs> it's uh, a lot of people are real psychic with it. I don't consider myself psychic. I consider myself very intuitive. A lot of people say I'm psychic, but um, that's a big honor. I. Um, but that's a big honor. Would you like to would you like to get to it? Yeah. I mean, was, that was a humble brag, wasn't it? A lot of people say I'm psychic, <laughs> but you know, and that's a big honor. But I don't know. That's don't how know. you would be, Joe. I think that's how you would be psychic. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's how I think you'd say it. Right. Like a lot of people say that I'm so good at what I do, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, that sounds like me. And avert the negative pattern. So I'm like a caged animal that needs to be set free to run wild, kind of. Could be. All right. Well, Is that the longest silence in television oh, history so right there? Amazing. It's is up there that... with the North Dakota news blooper uh, gaffe that yeah. was shown in volume nine. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you very much, Trisha, for coming in. This, this might be one of the best endings to any show ever right here coming up. And uh, we appreciate everything you've done. You can call me at 319. I live at Muscatine Avenue, apartment number one. It's right across the street from Walgreens. Well, thank you again for coming in. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, blessed be. Thank you very I'm much. I'm very uh, honored to have this opportunity. 
and a slow fade out. <laughs> Let's, you know what? Let's end all of our shows by saying our address right down to the apartment number. Right. Right. <laughs> and what drugstore it's across from. I think those are important things to get out of the way right away. I love her so much. Uh, I, and I think that we tracked her down. I think she's, I think she's still doing it. I think she had a Facebook Good. page for a long time and, uh, well, you know, I've heard the thing about when people do a cold read, what psychics do, like a, you know, they'll people say, well, they knew stuff about me that that there's no way they could have known. But in reality, you've told them more than you think you've done because they just kind of let you say more. They they drop a little hint and then wait for you to over explain everything. Um, and I wonder if that was her thing, but she didn't quite get the balance right. Or she's yeah. just like, he's like, so I'm a caged animal. And she's like, could be. Maybe that's a very, you know, adept way to uh, do a, a reading. I remember in high school, we went to the Wisconsin Dells and they have psychics there. Me and my buddy went there and we we paid like five bucks. And I remember her saying, your name starts with a J. And we both looked at each other and we're like, whoa, she got it right. But she probably just heard us talking earlier. Right. I mean, yeah, absolutely. she didn't hear it all the way. Yeah. yeah. Or she was really psychic and she just knew first letters of names. It's true. Could be. <laughs> Um, but Patricia's the real deal. Uh, Steve, yeah. I see you have a very well-designed backdrop. What's going on behind you? I am selling out for uh, Don Sparrow. He has a new book coming out. Let me cover my screen for a second so you can see better. Uh, Waiting for Wednesday. It is a new comic book short story um, from Don. Um, Waiting for Wednesday is a semi-autobiographical comic book short story about unrequited high school romance and the excuses we make to keep us from pursuing things that we really want in life touches on bullying, class structure, and self-perception, but all in a separate, self-deprecating and comedic tone. It's for a fan of cartoonists like Seth, Chester Brown, Joe Matt, and Brian Lee O'Malley, and it is especially relevant to anyone who grew up in the 90s. It can be purchased directly at donsparrow.bigcartel.com or through his website, uh, dons, www.donsparrow.com. And for those of you who don't know, Don is the one who did the Saturday morning cartoon. He did that background. Yeah, The artwork, and, yeah. Yep. The artwork. And then he also did, and I just received these today, he had done a picture of me, and I got it, put it on a golf ball. Oh, am I going to be able to show you guys? Well, I think you smeared your lens, too, because it's really like, you're really <laughs> soft. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll try to get that cleaned up right now, Joe. <laughs> okay. but yeah, we'll try to get that cleaned up. Uh, that, yeah. Out. Oh, that's cool. All right. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Support Don Sparrow. He he uh, is a fantastic artist. I love his art. And, yeah. Uh, I love the I, look. He gave the look of of Saturday morning cartoons too. So yeah, there was yeah. a time where I had an idea for a bit on that where we were we we're playing um, a horror based cartoon, and I always thought, oh, maybe there's one based on Hellraiser, but they're all in a band and uh, called like the Swing and Cenobites. And I just told him the premise. And there were all the Cenobite creatures from uh, Hellraiser drawn as Saturday morning cartoons playing like bones and things and uh, just knocked it out of the park. So, yeah. yeah. So definitely support the Melinda's. Yeah. Super talented and a super nice guy. So please support the Melinda's and support us. That's right. Well, um, now it's time for uh, this week in Flying Windows. Are you ready for this, Joe? Or Yep, I'm I'm ready. Let's do it. Am I, okay. wait, am I doing that? Am I providing? Yep, or, I got I, it. I got okay. it. I, just I got something. You. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, by the way, these are spooky flying windows. So I'm giving a, tri a trigger warning that there might be some there might be some hauntings uh, with these flying windows. So are we gonna be scared shitless? Yeah. Okay, I said these are scary. This is a, a 1997 documentary called "An Unknown Encounter" about a couple of hauntings that happened. And uh, I included some of the non-flying window parts, but there are three separate occasions where there are flying windows in this. So um, fascinating. This was a, a sent in by Samuel. So take a look. On November the 17th, 1988, not far from the hustle and bustle of the shipping lanes. Halloween costume potential? Uh, George, make a note. Okay. Shipping lanes. A young woman named Jackie Hernandez moved into a small house. Jackie was a lot like any other child growing up in Saratoga Springs back in the 1960s. You call these like ghostly? A young lane? and carefree girl. Oh, Nothing yeah. in her yeah. past ghost, gave any clue ghost windows. that she yeah. would be destined for such an extraordinary experience. 
That call would lead to the involvement of these three men in search Ooh. of the unknown. Look at this. Three men in search of the unknown. Oh, that's a Perry window. Psychologist. Yeah. But then look at this. Well, oh. What the hell's going on with these windows? Phenomenon. I, I it wish I knew. I think Ghost might be Perry controlling them. Who researched a classic 1974 case made famous in what, a movie. Like, why is Taft still in the window the back there? But... Well, then look at it. It comes up. Taft. <laughs> TV cameraman. Has shot over oh, there's so many berries, so little time. Yeah. For television. An Emmy Award winning photojournalist, Come on, please Conrad be named Barry. Both the ABC and NBC affiliated <laughs> TV triple up on berries. Now, they're also and named Conrad. Barry. <laughs> Let's triple up on berries. Come on. Two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three ain't bad. What if his last name had been Barry? That counts? Yeah. Two out of three ain't bad. What if his last name had been Barry? That counts? Yeah. Instead of his last name was wheat craft. Visual materialization is a sense of um, <laughs> corpuscular masses of light, like it's balls showing of light. lights, it's showing up in like photographs. Like almost fireball lightning. Flying Maybe wind. they're no, flying. I've seen that. Which one, Steve? This one. It, it, it makes the shape of a window. They all fly well, into place. Yeah, exactly. It's, it flies into like a grid it's window. Visual materialization is a sense of um, corpuscular masses of light, what? like balls of light. Those. Are flying windows within? That's what they look like in the four-dimensional world. That's what a, fl a flying window is actually very small. Um, and so what they captured on screen is a flying window going past that woman's face. <laughs> oh, and right. Really? On in the yeah. Okay. They're, they a, are a corpuscular flying window. Yeah, they're they're paranormal in origin. <laughs> just. Wow, you're, just so you know. you're so wise with windows. Those are ghosts that I believe in. Similar like thin, almost fireball lightning, but these aren't in any way, as they do not occur in this part of the world to begin with. What's wrong? What happened? Oh. I told you, get down! Is he hanging? Get yep. Oh. I don't think it's not grounds for believing that something beyond this world lurks out there. Waiting for us to discover its dark secrets. Kind of look like Snoop, secrets. Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> Vincent Price and Snoop Doggy Dog with a little Roy Sh Scheider. They, they um, even kind of talk the same too, don't they? <laughs> they're very Snoop laconic. Do yeah. Yeah. As high as hell. Vince, yeah. This is Vincent Prizzle. Uh, that's who this is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that is an unknown encounter, and I think we learned the secret origin of flying windows, that they are supernatural, that they're actually happening on screen. Uh, I had an idea for a flying window while we were watching that, that I'm just going to give out uh, give out to Melinda's, whoever, like playwright Melinda's, if there's a playwright, mm -hmm. let's do a, let's see a play that has flying windows in the play at the beginning of a play. So you George was talking about windows in real life. Let's let do that for the stage. I don't think it's been done yet. Flying Windows the Musical on Broadway. Yes, even better. All right. All right. You heard Get it here to it. first. Get to it, Melinda's. Um, All right. Joe, you had you had another flying window. This is we're I doubling do. up I on do. flying well, windows. Like I said, we're doing Iowa State jingles today. And I just want to set the stage. This will be in competition for uh, the state jingle tournament today, mm. today of Iowa. So, But this is for a, a, a theme park called Adventureland in Des Moines. It's one of the first theme parks I ever went to. I was probably like five or six years old. And it was my first, the first time I ever publicly vomited was at this very place. So if I get emotional during this, you'll know why. Um, when, 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 was that, when was the first time you guys publicly vomited? You guys remember? Or? Oh, yeah. It, I, we, I discussed on Saturday morning cartoons where I threw up alphabet soup in the school library. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I have publicly vomited, to be honest. <laughs> really? I, yeah, I don't think it's ever happened in public. I've always been home with the flu or something. I've never really known you to vomit either. No, pretty I strong think I, constitution. I but. think I've only seen you vomit once, and but I didn't even see you vomit. You, yeah. You're pretty good at it. doesn't happen very often. Slinking away. All right, well, let's watch the opening graphic anyway. One more time. All right, here it is, Adventureland. Um, do you hear anything? No. Well, let's just say it's like uh, I guess we need to hear the music, right, in order for it to. Well, uh... can, can we can we hear the see the flying windows now and then hear okay. this jingle during the actual competition? Yeah, it's gonna take some finagling, but uh, it's not gonna win. I don't think it's gonna win the tournament. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's peppy. Um, it's upbeat. Um, I like the look of those flying windows. What what if in the background you saw like me vomiting into a little? Because this is probably about the year that I vomited uh, oh. at, at Adventureland. <laughs> that would be um, like capturing a ghost on uh, on screen right there. It we would. saw that. 
Um, um, all right. Well, I'm gonna while I'm while I'm playing this, I'm gonna search for it. I'm gonna bring it back so you can hear the song. Okay. Um, uh, I hopefully- think uh, I think that the stage has been adequate adequately set for the Iowa State jingles, even without the. Well, even without the jingle in that one, we saw the yeah. windows. So, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm wetting your whistle. So, uh, yeah. any more business to take care of, or should we jump into these state jingles? Just one quick thing. Um, we uh, are, of course, uh, you're either watching us on YouTube or Facebook, but um, we also uh, have a brand new way to watch us. If you have a Roku device, um, which I I don't, my parents do. I don't have a Roku, but we now have a channel. We have a channel on Roku. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, it's uh, you can see it's got all our episodes on there, bonus stuff. It's none of the stuff that's behind the wall on on our Patreon or on our uh, SLP club or, or Rewind out rather our streaming club, but it's all the stuff uh, uh, you know that you can get on YouTube and other places in one place on Roku. So a lot of people have said, hey, how can I watch you on my TV? This episode will be uploaded the next day on there. So if you got a Roku box. Watch it on uh, your big screen and set your computer screen on our Roku channel. Just s- search for a uh, found footage festival in Roku. And uh, yeah, if the channel does well, this could be a new uh, avenue for us. Yeah. Uh, Shatterday's on there. Willie's Garage is on there. All of our all of our bullshit's on there. So yeah, yeah. hop on if you got a Roku. I, I want to get a Roku just so I can see what it looks like. I do too. So, it looked pretty slick when uh, we're, yeah. they're showing us how it works. So um, anyway, check that out. And uh, but without further ado, let's get to the state jingles. There we go. State, 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 Commonwealth, Commonwealth, state, 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 Commonwealth, Commonwealth, state, 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 state jingles. Okay. So before we jump into Iowa State Jingles, do you remember you remember Roz, right? Yeah, of uh, course. What a, a top three plunket of all time. She was at a Renaissance fair, and uh, a guy dressed up as a centaur came up to her and got uh, she got her photo taken with him. But then she realized it just looks like she's taking a photo with a shirtless dude, and uh, that's a classic. So her husband Michael um, said uh, sent. So she loves that state song. She loves the state jingle song, which I think is probably the best graphic that George has ever put together and song. And he, she was singing it to herself and he surreptitiously recorded her Ooh. while she was singing it. And he asked us to play, play it. So uh, here's uh, Roz, Centaur Girl, singing the state, state, commonwealth jingle song. So oh, wow. yeah, she, she has a whole song memorized too, which is cool. And, and she knew like jingles can come up, it comes up abruptly. So that could take you by surprise if you don't know it, but yeah, she yep. seemed to know it pretty well. Um, all right. Iowa jingle time. These are near and dear to my heart. I honestly feel like Iowa, I feel like they might have invented the jingle. They're so good at it. There's so many of them out there. I lived in Iowa for a little while. My parents uh, were born and raised in Iowa, and they met in Iowa, and my brother was born in Iowa, and I, all my aunts and uncles and everybody lives in Iowa. So I reached out to them. Cousins got in touch with me. My aunts got in touch with me. My mom was looking up stuff um, and uh, found a bunch of Iowa jingles, and I was so hard. I had probably like two dozen, and I had to... I had, trim them down fun, but, fun yeah. fact uh, just real quick about um iowa i believe this is the time where we did a show one time that wasn't promoted very well in des moines and it was only your cousins who showed up it was maybe like an aunt and a cousin it was yeah. like five people and they were all your blood relatives and i remember that was a pretty harsh show too i remember there was a lot of full frontal male nudity in that show so it was even more awkward and then one yeah. of my dad's high school buddies showed up too and uh he showed up with his wife and his wife left early so <laughs> I remember so watching five like, people, one <laughs> left early. Yep. And she had to have gone and like sat in the car. Like what else was yep. she gonna do? She didn't have to yeah. Well, that's um, Iowa show business for you. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing about Iowa is uh the drunkest I've ever been on stage. Ah. I, like I learned a lesson that night in Iowa City. You remember that there was like tornado warnings and we thought that we'd have to cancel the show because there was all these tornado warnings and like six people showed up and they uh, um the, the sound guy, the projectionist, kept giving me drinks. It was at Gabe's in Iowa City. Yeah. And I got so, I had to apologize to the audience, like in a slurred. I mean, it's <laughs> embarrassing. 
like I like to be like perfectly buzzed, not like shit face drunk. So and I was uh, I anyway. was uh, p- packing up and you were uh, singing Guided by Voices songs on stage uh, yeah. <laughs> while yeah. I was doing that. Because I, I had seen them at Gabe's before, like 10 years uh-huh. prior. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to pretend like I'm Guided by Voices. And you're meanwhile lugging out the boxes of merch and yeah. uh, the guys feeding more more, more uh, whiskey shots. So I, I think anyway. the, the real question that story raises is, did you learn your lesson? <laughs> <laughs> ish ish i never get that shit face on stage never that that i haven't was a i haven't said that was a bit yeah that was a bad one all right um, all right let's dive in so I, I have a bunch here but i trim away the fat so whenever they're like 25 percent down with apr finance i take out all that stuff i just keep the meat in here of just the jingles and just the songs and um all right i'll, I'll walk you through we'll uh, get started here with christy garage door company and i think the song kind of sounds like a like a like a lazy Weezer song, like maybe from like the mid aughts, mid to late aughts, like maybe like 2008 Weezer song. George, tell me if I'm I'm right on this. So here it is, Christie Garage Door Company. Doors go up, doors go down. That's what garage doors do. But when yours won't go up or down, Christie has the solution for you. We repair. Estimates are free. Give your place a pretty face with Christie Door Company. Doors go up, doors go down. Door. Doors go up, doors go down. Wow, that was like a, yeah. What do you think? That, that was the death of Twee Pop right there. <laughs> it was. It really Good was. Good uh, What do you think? Does they have a chance to win it? It's catchy. It's a toe tapper. I'm not going to bring it to the toe tapping tournament, but. Uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad look for. I can see it getting stuck in your head for yeah. sure. It's a little too sing-songy for my taste. A little yeah. too, but uh, I could definitely see it, like three in the morning trying to sleep, and that's going through your head. Yeah, I want I want you guys to take notes too, because you're gonna see you're gonna hear a lot of songs here. I want you guys to take notes and uh, just so just so you don't get confused, because I have a feeling everybody's gonna like the last one the most, because that's my favorite, but. <laughs> Stick with this. Stick with it. Here we go. Okay. Dewey Ford. This is a, a local car dealership, and I think that I think this is another one like three people sent me. Uh, so, uh, and I looped this one a few times at the end, just so that you could really get a feel for it and get it in your head as if you've seen it a few times. Here we go. Do we treat you better? At Dewey Ford, we'll save you more with Iowa's. I think it's lo- like the president of Iowa, isn't he? <laughs> That's yeah. like the most Iowan man I've ever seen in my lifetime. Those prices bad. on new Fords. We are Ford country. Do we treat you better? We do. And do we Ford? Do we treat you better? We do. And do we Ford? Do we treat you better? helpful to listen to it like four times in a row because then you really get a feel for it otherwise you in, in know in one ear than out the other uh what do you guys think huh i couldn't agree more but listening to it repeatedly i liked it i thought it was a good one i thought that was uh i liked that one better than the garage door one okay i don't care for it oh, really you don't like to, it okay. I just maybe it was just it was it looked like uh i, I didn't care for the visuals it, it distracted me from the uh what were the yeah. visuals again? Oh, it looked like it just, a, like Getty Images or something. Yeah, it looked and like then, an advertisement for white people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Iowa is known yeah. for. Well, um, I like what she does with her head there. She kind of goes, "Oh, yeah." Aww. Well, two two things about it. I wasn't. What I liked about it is uh, when he goes, "Do we?" I was not expecting him to go as high on the word treats. I thought oh. it was going to be like, "Do we treat you better?" But it was, "Do we?" Treat you better. Oh, okay. He really has to reach for it. So let's, I let's like... do it again. Do we treat you okay. better? Yeah. We do. And do we fall? That's a reach. Yeah, yeah. But the part I that I didn't like—the part I didn't like was how how I was a little too pleased with its wordplay. With "Do we treat you better?" Do we, you know, do we, and then do we? I just we got we got it. You don't have to underline it. Yeah, I think this might be an Otis though. This kind of has Otis. Mm. Uh, vibes to it um all right next up this might be the first jingle that i ever got that ever got stuck in my head 
uh, and I heard it in Wisconsin, but we lived in Prairie du Chien, which is right on the border of Iowa and, and Wisconsin. So we were on the Wisconsin side, but this would play for debut camps. Do you remember this commercial, Nick? Yeah, I have a story about it. I'll tell afterwards. All right, here we go. Here's Dubuque Hams. Now, again, I don't think this one's going to win because they're just doing a they're doing a parody song, you know. But uh, it's still this is this is near and dear to my heart. Meals can be a dream when you serve a ham this lean. Dubuque, Dubuque, da 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 da. It tastes supreme. Da 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 da. So tender and lean. Enjoy juicy lean Dubuque hams, canned or smoked. You guys have been to canned ham before? <laughs> maybe, Nick hasn't. Maybe at Easter one time as a kid. I don't you know. Think, you think you do have some canned ham in your system right now? But possibly. Remember it always had that gel on the top? I definitely oh, remember ugh. that. Some sort ugh. of gelatin to seal in the hamminess. Steve, have you ever had a canned <laughs> ham? Oh, yeah. A lot when we were growing up. Yeah. yeah. What like do they taste better or do they they just keep? I think they just keep and they're probably a little bit cheaper. Um, is my guess. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Remarkably delicious. Classic. What's your story, Nick? I want to hear this. I so there's a kid in my like third grade class named Kevin. And uh, we found out he was from Dubuque, which was, you know, that's that's from another state. We were not accustomed to a foreigner coming into Wisconsin. And uh, so the kids made up uh, a song about uh, his homeland that was Dubuque, Dubuque. Uh, it smells like puke. Uh, and my recollection is that made him cry. So it's a little, a little, accomplished. little jingle based bullying to report there. And Joe was not involved. You're saying? <laughs> yeah, was I was there. So. I don't think you were there. Mm. I, didn't okay, know I like you were the. Not. I like the. Yeah, I like the rhyme scheme a lot. <laughs> right, but they're doing a parody of a song that was already a parody. So you know that's what kids do, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Does that one, uh, George? Do you have a, a clear standout yet? I mean, I, it's got to be disqualified because it's already a song. But that's my favorite so far: the dancing canned hams. And canned hams are, yeah. are like I only saw them in like cartoons and comic strips growing up. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't think it was good. I didn't think I had a chance to win, but I had to play because there was some nostalgia there for me. Yeah. So, um, all right. Next up is the Hungry Hobo, a little uh, hip hop flavor with this one here. Hungry Hobo. Hello, it's a rapping sandwich. But you know what's even more outlandish than that? It's our combo meal. Take advantage quick. You could eat me with a drink and a bag of chips. Baked potatoes. Whoa, what a deal. Pardon the pun, but that's a meal with a peel for real. Let the chili chill. You can burn yourselves on all these hot deals. Hungry Hobo, y'all, we got skills. Two locations in the metro, yeah. Herbendale and West Des Moines. Taste this. Easy to find, hard to resist. I didn't think it was that bad. Like lyrically, I didn't think it was that bad lyrically. That was great. That was that's I, that's going to go all the way. That was all that and a bag of chips. It, <laughs> it had was, a puppet. It had it a was, rap. Yeah, it was spitting rhymes and lettuce. Um, yeah. I, uh, I mean, when you when you think about fast food raps, I mean Kemper Burgers, which you know the meter is way off. I had to help it out in my edit just to make it uh, palatable. This actually, you know, the rhymes were pretty good. I thought the the rapping was competent, and uh, it reminded me a lot of Mr. Sprinkles' rap from um, Quarantine Classics. <gasps> I forgot about Mr. Sprinkles and his <laughs> rap. <laughs> oh, I haven't thought about Mr. Sprinkles in a long time. Yeah, that right. was Sprinkle-like. Yeah. Yeah. George, you got to bring back Mr. Sprinkles. <laughs> did, did you I'll look kill into him it. off? Did you kill him off? Or uh, you, uh... No, but he must be pretty old by now. He, he yeah. was Because he did that. Remember, he did a... Um, a, a roast in the mid '70s that we That's watched. That's right. That's right. So. Yeah. But he was still as high pitched as ever when he talked. So. <laughs> he sure um, was. Here's another one that everybody sent to me. This is High V, and I remember mm -hmm. uh, the, like High V's are everywhere. Yeah, that's the Iowa grocery store, and uh, yeah, everybody sent this one. And this one's very, very dramatic and very serious, and just like, you know, it's one of those ones where it's like you have a friend with our company, kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Like our company loves you and we care for you. We're here for you. So this is hy -V. More ways to say, more reasons to smile. hy the store that 
All those pills <laughs> spilling out. <laughs> Shop Heidi, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Yeah, and that that's a classic. I guess that one's been around for 50 years, and mm. and that's something that yeah, that, that's going to that win a tournament. A... That's my prediction. Really? really? That looks like a yeah. It looks like the sort of thing. It's got the maj- majesty that people seem to like. Uh, mm. Not, I, I'm not a fan, but. I wouldn't put your money on that one. Well, maybe. Okay. Uh, you're saying I put your you, money but... on it. Okay. Do yeah. that then. Um, we're halfway there. So uh, there's still so much more. And of course I loaded it the best up towards the, towards the end, but this one, this next one, again, the song is just okay, but I'm more fascinated with the number of backwards hats that are in it. And I, and I wondered if Iowa invented the backwards hat. I feel like I see a lot of backwards hats, like baseball hats, uh, on heads of Iowa men specifically. So this is for uh, Hawkeye Community College. Think again. And, and Wayne, if you're watching, can you please count all the backwards hats in this? Sure, Hawkeye Community College has top-notch technical programs, but if you think that's all Hawkeye has, think again. Hawkeye Community College has... Look at that, a triple. Oh, wow. Triple. Look yeah. at all those backwards hats. How many are we up to now? Like seven? I would say they outnumber the frontwards hats. I think they do. All kinds of great classes do. I should start soon, so call today. Again, I didn't think that was a great song, but I just wanted to put it in there because of all the backwards hats. Yeah, hey, sometimes a sing- single line uh, is a good enough for a jingle. You know, look at yeah. by Menon. I mean, that's yeah. that could be yeah. the by Menon of the Iowa tone. Uh, State Jingle Tournament. So this next one, Lebeda, Lebeda Mattress. Uh, this is another one that two people sent me. I did I did some looping on this one, so it really sink in, really like grab hold of you. And uh, I think this might be one where it is just like a by Menon. We should call those Menons. <laughs> I think this is a Menon. Okay. Where it's just like one line, and then we'll just hear it over and over again. You pack a punch. Yeah. The greatest mattress in the It's Lebeda's luxury closeout sale. Lebeda, Lebeda, everybody knows it. Lebeda, 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 everybody knows it. Lebeda, 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 everybody knows it. Lebeda, 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 everybody knows it. Lebeda. It's a really lazy commercial, too. <laughs> I felt like I was being jingle boarded. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this this should be called jingle boarding. Yes, <laughs> where we jingle board everybody. Yes, uh, and that that commercial. You know, it's like the owner's like son or something or grandson, uh, and he just sits there with like and nods his head and gives the thumbs up. Um, all right, what do you guys think? You like Lebeda? That's yeah, another it kind of people... had a tropical flair. Like you're on an island somewhere, Lebeda. Lebeda. And the kid looked like he would have the same voice as my nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Like you'd never heard him talk, but he just had that feeling to me. Definitely. I wonder if it was the same director as Atlas Butler. It um, could have been. All right, George. You have Steve, has anything swept you off your feet yet? Uh, I'm still a Dewey Ford. Dewey Ford's got the lead for me uh, okay. as of now. Okay. George, I, I feel like you just haven't been wowed yet. No, a hungry, uh, hungry hobo. Oh, that's right. You were wowed by a hungry hobo. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so that's your front runner, Nick. What's your front runner so far? This might surprise you, but it's Dubuque. Yeah, it's a, it's a jingle that <laughs> it's a jingle that made somebody cry. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that that jingle, but the spoof jingle by asshole kids was what made him cry. But. Um, isn't, right, uh, next up. Isn't, isn't how they got Noriega out of his compound, wasn't it by jingle boarding? Wasn't it yeah. by <laughs> blasting with speakers? But did uh, you, if you had known that today's episode would include the term spoof jingles by asshole kids, <laughs> I don't think you could have predicted that. But I love that phrase. That might be the name of the episode. Be, actually. 
Uh, all right, this next one. Okay, so if you haven't been swept off your feet, this next one probably will. Here's the problem with this one, though. It's for Orbeez. This guy's a van salesman. He's the, I think he's called the super van man. Um, the video is shot off of a TV. So some Iowan ran to the TV, but they didn't have DVR or anything. And so they just recorded it on their phone. And it, it sounds shitty and it looks shitty, but I think it only enhances this commercial. And uh, so this is another one where I looped it. I think, I don't know if this is a Menon. I think it's just like a one-liner, you know, and I loop it a few times. So here's Orbeez. I just I really like the I really like that Superman though. Like I mean th- this is this is basically a Tim and Eric sketch, isn't it? Like <laughs> They would definitely like cast him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just like look at his, yeah, like look at his face. Yeah, yeah. That's like a Tim and Eric, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's the van salesman. Like, look, and look at that move right there. Where he's... Kind of a moonwalk, maybe. If that was me, that would be the high point of my life. That would be <laughs> everything about that. I would be smiling like that, too. And I just love this commercial, just like different styles of vans, minivans. You got full size vans. You got some high toppers, mm-hmm. uh, and then like look at his moves, <laughs> look at those, like in slow motion. Just like it's just really like, oh man, maybe really Orbeez filling out those the shorts too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love the cinematography too of the person because you can see the person's uh, reflection in the in the TV there a little <laughs> bit too. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> this there's a very Dave just... Hawkins cinematography too. Yeah. <laughs> get the bag, get the bag, get the bag, the bag, bag. Uh, Superman Sorry, comes man. out with his arms up. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So that's actually that might be my favorite. I don't know. These next two are really good. Suburban Construction is up next, and this is one. Sometimes you just hear a song and you're like, I want to know what it sounds like when Reese sings that song. Reese is our resident singer from Australia. He has a beautiful voice and he has great taste in, in toe tappers. And I just feel like this is a Reese song. Um, take take a listen. Suburban construction is our name, it's on everything that we do. Quality is our benchmark, it's our guarantee to you. We're so proud of our workmanship. Hey, Quad City. Uh, I don't like that he interrupted that song. I want to hear, we're so proud of our workmanship, <laughs> and then and then we get interrupted. I want to hear the rest of the song. We're so proud of our workmanship. Hey, Quad Cities. You know the words to that famous jingle. Now sing along. For windows, siding, and doors, suburban construction. So he acknowledged that they had this this catchy jingle that everybody knows. So must be one of those, like, it's been around for, like, 100 years. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like the Menards jingle for Wisconsin or, yeah. That, that yeah. definitely seemed to have staying power. Yep. All right. One left in the Iowa Jingle-a-thon, the Iowa Jingle Boarding uh competition this one's for northern lights pizza and i've had the song in my head all day long and i went a little nuts with looping this one so uh just bear with this one but i just couldn't stop i was on the airplane today and i was just like i'm gonna loop it one more time so but it actually has a nice build to it and uh, i think you're gonna like it plus the commercial's fantastic too so all right pay close attention no interrupting here we go Northern Lights Pizza. Mom, what's for supper tonight? Big name pizza. Aww. Mom, I'm going to Nathan. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. What did we get this time? Kids can taste the difference and so will you. Order a Northern Lights Pizza tonight and you'll say, The pizza's great. Love the breadsticks. Northern Lights Pizza.
Uh, what do you think? What, uh, let's hear it. Uh, what do you guys think? What's your, uh, favorites? Uh, your least favorites? Uh, talk to me. George. Hungry uh, Hobo and Orbeez. Th those are my favorites. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. But, but I, I, I don't know. Orbeez, I, yeah, I don't know. Super did you like Northern Lights Pizza? Uh, I did. I like your version of it, but I don't think I don't think I think the original commercial would have just rolled right off me. Northern Lights Pizza, like you would you would. <laughs> no, I know I know the notes. <laughs> <laughs> I liked your version of it, but um, oh, let's see. yeah. That, that took an entire plane ride to put together. <laughs> I, I believe. And, it. Then I, and I redid it like four times. I was like, no, I think it should go like up one more octave at this point, and then maybe I'll, at the end I'll like bring it all back down. I can't believe it didn't end with an explosion, though. That's where I thought it was going to happen. <laughs> God damn it! I should have <laughs> run this by you first. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. In terms uh, of uh, in terms of video accompaniment, I, I it would be a toss up to me between Orbeez and uh, Hungry Hobo. I mean, a wrapping sandwich and then. Uh, uh, sort of a, a paunchy Superman that's a Tim and Eric sketch. It's hard to discount the videos. And the Northern Lights Pizza video also good because it had the, the kid who looks like he was wearing like a jet skiing life preserver, but it's actually a tank top. I was confused by that too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's it, it has like the, the computerized thing that came up as if the Predator's looking at him and identifying what his pizza <laughs> needs are. What did it say? Like one, this is one determined kid determined or something kid. like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and then it was, uh, what was it? And like? they said something about like, I'm, I'm going to Nathan's house. I was confused by that. I was like, is the yeah. pizza place called Nathan's? Yeah. Um, so I think for songs, I got to go between Dewey Ford and Northern Lights Pizza. And because of the video, I'm going to give the nod to, you know what? Call an huh. audible. Dubuque. What? Dubuque. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow, nothing beat Dubuque, huh? It, it's the first jingle that I ever had in my head. It, it was used to taunt a classmate. Um, and it's parodying a song that sounds nothing like it, Shaboom. So, it, you know, which is, I don't know, it's not even really close to Dubuque. So uh, I got to go with Dubuque. I, I don't care that it's a parody. Okay, so you went Dubuque one, and then what would you say is your number two? Northern Lights Pizza? Yeah, or, that's okay. my number two, yeah. And, or, and Orbeez is up there too, or is it uh, Dewey Ford? Did you say Dewey Ford there? is my number three, yeah. <laughs> Pick up. All right, Steve, let's hear it. Um, I was shocked to hear that everyone liked the Hungry Hobo so much. That was definitely my uh, my second lowest grade. Uh, Ooh, really? What was your yeah. lowest? Um, what's the Holly one? After I can't read my own handwriting. After High V, what was that one? Oh, Hawkeye. that uh, the Hawkeye Community College. Hawkeye Community Hawkeye College. Community College. Yeah, that was that mostly. One. But did you like the backwards hats in it though? Love the backwards hats, but I wasn't grading <laughs> on backwards hats. You know me, you... I'm a hat guy. Do you occasionally wear your hats backwards? Without a doubt, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, to me, it came down between uh, Dewey Ford and uh, the what, I can't read my handwriting again. The mattress one is it? Oh, Lebeda. 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 The island oh. flare. Yeah. So yeah, those, yeah. Those were. It was between those two, and ultimately Dewey Ford was the winner. Really? Okay. So everybody has a different horse in the race here. My favorite is Northern Lights Pizza because it just won't leave my. <laughs> head but uh, george i think you might be onto something i think that the, what i have in my head is my version of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great i love your version i wish they went with that yeah um maybe but, present it to them i you know what i think i'm going with orbeez because orbeez is actually take out my loop it's like the lyrical composition of it uh it's a toe tapper and i might bring it out for the toe tapping tournament i might bring orbeez out i could see it having wow. some legs It'd be a welcome return that would be a welcome return yeah yeah. Well, if you would like to, uh, of course, it's not our votes that count. It's your vote. So go to patreon.com slash found footage festival. And uh, hey, it's a good chance to support our show, support everything we do as well. And uh, here's what the page looks like, more or less. Uh, and on here, you don't even have to be a patron. You can just scroll down and you can go and uh, you can vote for your favorite jingle there at patreon.com slash found footage festival. And uh, and let us know. Next week, we'll announce the results of uh, Io's official state jingle, and maybe even Judah, the doctor who watches our show, will Photoshop what the state flag will look like uh, representing the jingle. Do you still have the wallet-sized uh, state cutout 
that you I, made? That, I do. Yeah, it's okay. in my wallet, but I don't and have so, it handy. But, and so yeah. people at home can like write in their favorites or write in the ones that won or their favorites. Yep. No, the ones that that won. It's almost okay. like the state quarters. You know how you have those little like cases right. you put in. Uh, this would be Iowa. You would write in Orbeez, for example. Once it once it wins or uh, what whatever ends up winning. So, what do you think the Mondas? You never really know what the Mondas. You never know no. what which way it's going to go. But what do you think the Mondas are going to like? I, um, I think I think it's going to be Orbeez. I think they're going to go to Orbeez. Really? Well, I don't know. Who knows? What I don't know. Mean. For repetition's sake, I think you know you kind of you kind of stack the deck with the last one, so they A might. If, I mean, it's the last one. It's stuck in my head now. So, who knows? We will see. Uh, but that's um, why the Melindas are are so important to this process. Yep. All right. Stay tuned next week for the uh, winner of the what are we calling it now? The uh, state the, jingle the, tournament. No, no, no. The uh, what? Uh, jingle boarding. Oh, the jingle yeah, boarding. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, now for the educational portion of the show where we teach you how to watch cyber videos on the internet. We got two requests in the last week to reprise a cyber video, and this is a guy um named james who was performing at a at a church you can hear him performing at this church he's doing a, a gospel a modern gospel song by brian free and assurance called um uh, looking for a city and the idea of the song is this person with great voice just keeps getting higher and higher and and kind of the song just keeps ramping up and uh, james canop uh attempts this at this church and uh i don't know why we got two requests in the same week for it but uh I'm glad because we got to revisit this every couple of months, I think. Great. Looking for a city, the reprise. Oops, I shared the wrong window. Sorry. Oh, boy. Whenever you um, share, like, like the Patreon page, I always try to look at what your other tabs are, what tabs you have. Open. Oh, I'm aware. I'm aware of that. So oh, I, you are? I okay. make sure right. to yeah, that, it's that, that all yeah. those tabs. <laughs> you probably saw New York State DMV. Well, we'll see what that is uh, in a few minutes. All right, here we go. Looking for a city. Well, this next and final song is going to be one that has made me pretty famous over the last few years. Um, it has took me a lot of places I didn't think I would be at. Um, it's called Looking for City. I edited it down because the whole thing's like eight minutes. Looking for a city built above Looking for a city Where I'll never die Where the same in millions Never say goodbye Written Oh, a city That's all I'm doing. So see ya. Are our homes real? Oh. I mean, this seems like something we do on local news, but it's a real thing. It's a real guy, and uh, bless his heart. He That's he so was good. very. It was more entertaining than probably anything else on the bill on that church that day. Yeah, he nailed it. Totally nailed it um all right too cool what uh george what do you got you always got some fun stuff you've been knocking out of the park with cyber videos lately oh great uh well over the weekend i saw an instagram reel you might have seen uh about an early 80s news report by houston's investigative correspondent marvin zindler he's like sort of a will ferrell type character who's just yelling at the screen and it was an in-depth report about a frog in a toilet did you, i don't know if you saw no, this. no i didn't see this okay anyhow but it just uh, it made me Google him, and he was amazing. He is deceased now, but uh, that story was just the tip of the iceberg. I think there, there, there might be a new corner out of this, the Zindler corner. So here is just his report from October 30th, 1980. Action 13's Marvin Zindler tonight has a real dog of a story concerning the voter registration laws and how easily they can be skirted. 
raises the question of just how many illegal votes may be cast next week. Well, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and a lot of dogs would probably like to vote. In fact, one dog did have a valid voter's registration card. That is, until today. Mrs. R.P. Blackmire of Tomball has a beautiful 200-pound female mastiff named Minnie Rob. To demonstrate how easily fraudulent voter registration cards can be obtained, Mrs. Blackmire and her husband put their dog's name on a registration coupon, which they clipped out of a newspaper, and then had the dog make an X on it. The Blackmires mailed it in. Lo and behold, a few days later, back came a voter registration card in the name of Minnie Rob Blackmire. The dog was a registered voter. Mrs. Blackmire and I took Minnie Rob to see tax assessor collector Carl Smith, who was not oh, at all amused. Smith says it's a third degree felony to falsify an application for a voter's registration, and he threatened to take the Blackmares before a grand jury for registering their dog. Is the person that signs it and the person that witnesses, are they both guilty? Well, now, I'm not, the, you know, I'm not the lawyer in the well, case. Know, I'm just uh, you, you the You wrote the law. You I'm said the voter it. Well, I was. You wrote the I law. certainly helped in writing it because at that time. What we penalty do you problem. think they're going to give the dog? Meanwhile, Minnie Rob, who hadn't said a word through all this, waited in the car, afraid she might be going to jail. Meantime, her voter registration card was canceled. My old friend Carl was a little upset with me over this, but Mrs. Blackmire did make her point. Easy voter registration makes it easy to stuff the ballot box. And as for Minnie Rob, I'm not so sure who she would have voted for, but her vote would have been just as intelligent as a lot of legally registered voters. Marvin Zindler, <laughs> Eyewitness News. Thank you, Marvin. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. Thank you, Marvin. But just, just they made the dog. They put the the pen in the dog's hand and, and made to make an X. And they just, say that they say that the dog signed it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they just gave uh -huh. him the pen and the dog signed an X. Yeah. But that's the quality of his thing. He had a regular uh, feature called, called the Rat and Roach Report, where he read out the names of um, all like <laughs> the the uh, restaurants that had violations that week. But he also and then he turned it into a thing called. Slime, what was it called? Slime in the ice machine. That was a regular feature. Uh, Slime in the ice machine. I love these gotcha, these gotcha oh, reports. They're the best, yeah. And, you know, I think you have a contestant for the next Who's the Yelling Nest because he yelled <laughs> that entire thing. He, I bet his voice is hoarse by the end of, of his segments. He's just screaming the entire time. So Here's, many people are wronged. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to make it well, right. We have him to thank. Yeah, thank Marvin Sindler. The way he closes him is amazing. Anyhow. Uh, Steve, what do you Steve. have? Um, so George contributed with this one as well. So uh, I'm working on a uh, wrestling show nowadays, and George sent me over some wrestlers as a jock sham. And Wait, you're uh, working on a wrestling show now? Yes, WWE's Most Wanted Treasures for A&E. Really? Oh, yeah. that's kind of a fun one, right? Is it yeah. fun so far? So far, so good. We're still. Have you met any process. wrestlers? I did. Yes, I met uh, uh, Lita and uh, Natalia Nightheart. Two two okay. wrestlers. Is that? Uh, I thought uh, you were gonna say like Jim Jim B, uh, dog uh, Anvil yeah. Nightheart's daughter. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Oh, is All it? Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, cool. But in any event, this is a, um, a ad for Pizza Inn. Um, which the Von Eriks, which I vaguely, vaguely remember the end run. My brother was really into wrestling, so I think this is probably a little bit before our time. But once again, really uh, doing a great job. But then they asked him to sing at the end, which I think might Ooh. be a mistake. Ooh, I'm looking forward to this. All right, Her wrestlers are generally good at commercials because they have to be pitch men and women during their little mean gene They're interviews. always good. They're the best of, of all athletes. I think so. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're show they're, people. Yeah, they're actors. My brothers taught me about wrestling, but I taught them about eating. So he brought us to Pizza Inn's all-you-can-eat buffet. You get hot, fresh pizza. Thin crust or pan. Plus, there's plenty of spaghetti, garlic toast, and a salad bar. All for a super low price. Now, when you buy any small, medium, or large pizza, you'll get a 20 by 28 color poster Twisting of your favorite windows. Von Eric. This week's poster features all three Von Erics. Collect all four. For pizza out, it's Pizza Inn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. They're not as good as like Randy Macho Man Savage, but you know, like oh, they're is. they're learning. I mean, yeah. yeah. The singing though is where it kinda of went off the rails, I think. I agree. Yeah. 
Um, all right. I want. Can I play that uh, that video that I had promised before that that didn't come through for Adventureland, where I vomited for the first time ever? Let me just yeah, play that. Yeah, we want to hear it's, that jingle. It's, it's, it's in one. contention. Yeah, this is also in contention. I don't think it's. Well, we'll see. I'm not going to make any uh, judgment here, but yeah, this is where I vomited for the first time, publicly. Uh, I was like five years old. Have a ball this fall at Adventureland. Come on over to Adventureland. You're gonna have a fun little day. And there's just a few weekends left at Adventureland. Don't sound. Make sure Adventureland 85 is part of your fall fun. Enjoy over a hundred ride shows and attractions, including the new A-Train and Thrilling Galleon. There's always something new in Adventureland. <laughs> yeah. Open this Saturday and Sunday and weekends in Timber. In Timber. <laughs> um yeah so it was, it was the it. Uh, roller coaster yeah that's pretty good i mean it's pretty standard i don't mm -hmm. think that it's like you know it's not reinventing the wheel here but uh pretty yeah. standard um all right what i did want to play which is gonna be in contention for the toe tapping tournament next march is a, a video nick i think you sent it to me i don't know where you found it but it's uh uh, for a song, a music video from I think like the early 2000s. So we're already starting to find stuff from like around like 2002, 2003. Uh, it's for a locally produced song by a singer songwriter. I forgot his name, but he did it about uh, this vacation spot in Iowa called Okaboji, which my, my parents used to go to when they were kids. It's like their Wisconsin Dells, basically, uh, Nick. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he wrote a song called Okaboji Girl. And where did you get, where did you find this, Nick? Was this like a thing online? I think it's a, what's that site? It's like an Instagram thing that has like um, homemade music videos. And I forget what it's called. Okay. Uh, people oh. are probably commenting now, but I, I'll look it up while you play this. Yeah. Well, this song's so good. And uh, I've been listening to it nonstop. And it's like four minutes long. And the video is fantastic, too. So here's Okaboji Girl. George, have you seen this one? No. Steve, have you seen that? No. I went outside and watered your flowers yesterday. Oh, flowers on fire. I tossed it. You guys get that metaphor, the symbol there? Flowers on fire. Now I do. Yeah. I tossed it and turned. You couldn't sleep in the bed we made. I love the double fist, the double fist, like bringing it in. This is how I f I'm afraid. This is how whenever I play a live show, this is how I'm afraid I'm coming across. <laughs> do you do the double fist? Like I, pulling down the double no, fist? No, I got to play guitar. But but just oh. how, you know, just in terms of like, you, you the usually cringe are, element. You usually are in front of a prominent exit sign <laughs> performing. Oh, like love's exiting and some of the ceiling tile of love has fallen <laughs> out in the back. <laughs> Beautiful Shelly. I never even noticed the ceiling tile fell out of there. <laughs> the drop oh, ceiling is yeah, falling down. Oh, you have to wow. read between the lines. Yeah. Oh, naughty. I heard a song on the radio made me cry. Places to eat, places to shop, everyone says hi. We'll do. We'll listen to one more hook, and then we'll. Uh... Oh, roses are burning. Oh. It's the Oak Budgie girl. That is her. Do you ever wear like a shirt like tucked into like some jeans when you're on stage? Uh, not since I gained 15 pounds. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> I, think, I think we saw enough here. I think, uh, yeah. So, but but watch the whole thing. You got to go on and watch this whole video. It's four minutes long. Uh, that it, sounds like a Gary Newman song with different singing, like the guy who did Cars. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. The, it's all that kind. Of, I don't know. It's very weird. And the goatee. The goatee is all I see. Yeah. It's a really wide goatee. Like it just yeah. gets, like, it goes out this way so far. Maybe so they're adding like a, 
It almost looks like a Homer Simpson like yeah. mouth. It's like so wide like that. The yeah. muzzle, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to sing this song again. It's the Overlord version. <laughs> um, that's from a, a the Catatonic Youths is the uh, the name of the Instagram. They post uh, music mu- music videos that kind of. Uh, Slip through the cracks. That was one of them on there. So that one, yeah, that one's so good. I sent that one to all my cousins too, and they really appreciate it. So that's uh, how do we cyber videos on the internet? A good yeah. batch. Yes. Uh, all right. I don't have the outro video, but uh, we have a lot to get to uh, because we got nice things coming up. This is a second. I got a ball game to go to too. So yeah, let's let's get, let's crank through these nice things. All right. Here's nice things. All right. First up. I don't know if anybody recognizes this guy. This is in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Jay met the guy on the on the left here. This is David Sowards, the uh, Fort Wayne uh, public access superstar. Who sure Jay said it was a normal guy, but you know I think he's self aware and loves to get attention on public access. Here's a reminder of show. <laughs> All right. And then this is a fun one. Uh, Erica's dog. Oops, sorry. Erica's dog uh, posed with Frisbee fuckers. This is one of the uh, oh, nice. Frisbees from the weirdest uh, German porno we've we found. Um, yeah, we make Frisbees of it. And Erica's dog, very cute, holding it. And finally, Tad wrote in and he said, Nick sighting in Omaha. He saw this flyer on a window for an event called Boopa Palooza. I thought that, that said Boopa Palooza. That happened. Uh, you thought it said what, George? Bloop a palooza. Oh because no! Because if you're you're you know you occasionally have a a bloop that Joe points out. Oh yes, yes. Um, no, this is actually, and we've played the waiting room lounge in Omaha, Joe. Yeah. Um, yeah, that so, place is great. But this is yeah. I have a license plate. This is Boop fan, which we'll we'll get to. But uh, that's the uh, very close to being me. So it is you, and that's a hat that you used to always wear hats like. Yeah, that, the too. newsboy. You- you went through like I would say like solid like 2009 through 2014. That was a, that was a Nick Pruer hat all the way. It's a big transition for me when I went to baseball caps. So, yeah, yeah. Last the bright th- red beard. Last thing uh, I found, uh, I was in Wisconsin over the weekend for my parents' anniversary, and I found a uh, Regis and Kathy Lee fan convention fanny pack from 1994. Fan and, convention? Yeah, it was a 1994 conve- fan convention, and uh, I was like. I had to get it because, I mean, where are you going to find this? And inside were um, expired um, neon sunscreens that I think probably came with originally with the fanny pack. So, Oh, some swag. They got some swag. They got some swag they when they attended. So anyway, those are my nice things. What do you have, Joe? Uh, so porta ponies. These are the, the porta ponies that have uh, funny titles. They're, you see them everywhere. And they're always – I don't know if they have a team of writers – or how they do it, but they always come up with some sort of like a poop joke in there, and they kind of do puns with like uh, toilet jokes. And uh, this first one, so uh, was sent in by a guy named Steve Lawrence, Steve from Manhattan. He sent this one in Cassie's cans. I thought this is uh, this is a good one. Steve, where'd you find this one? Uh, Matunic, Rhode Island, down by the shore. It was a, oh, yeah? My uh, my buddy, it- and right across the street from his house, they were having a little construction and. Boom, there it was. Cassie's you ran over there and you thought of me. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good friend. Not all right, next one. Good photo of you. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Rare. Not thumb like at all. You get a little gray though. Yeah. So you get a little gray down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting old. Time, time marches on. That's it. Oh, good point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good point. <laughs> next, good point. Uh, all right. Next one. George sent this one. This is a great one. And not our George. Like George, George hasn't done jack squat for me in the port of punnies department, but uh, our George has it. I won't get close enough to them. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) This George found uh, this one. GI John's. It's go time. That's That's for real too. Yeah, that's for real. We we, got to do this book, uh, the port of punny book. I mean, it's our ticket out of this hellhole. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you saw that at Urban Outfitters, you'd pick it up, right? Put it in every bathroom in America. Yeah. Um, all right, Angie in Nova Scotia sent me a an email said I wanted to contribute some Nova Scotian porta punnies to your collection. This is a company that fully embraces the porta punny spirit. They're called Honey Huts. They all have their own puns on the side. 
Okay, so look, look at some of these. So they have it on site. So make a splash. Get it? So they're, they're like, have, it's the, like messages like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told you about my porta potty story when I was at a brewer game, right? Oh yeah, uh, you got some yeah. splashback. I got some splashback on my scrotum and penis uh, from the <laughs> actual. Yeah. The, the yep, you have told blue. us that yeah. several times, but not yeah. necessarily in that level of detail. Mm. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no, oh, it's been that yeah. level of detail. And, and well, let me quiz you then, Nick. When I went to uh, the hand sanitizer, was there any hand sanitizer in there to clean up? There wasn't. You couldn't wash your hands. So, yep. And uh, what did I, what did I end up using to wash my hands? Beer. Ketchup. Uh, no, nope. oh, no, vodka, vodka. Yes, vodka. Yes. <laughs> vodka. Somebody brought a bottle of vodka, so I went over there, I poured the vodka on my hand. And then I, I didn't put it on my scrotum. I just kind of sat. It was before the baseball game, too. So I had to <sighs> sit with that blue piss and shit juice all over my anus and scrotum. And, and taint too. The blue liquid um, sanitizes it all. You're fine. I'm just going to remind everyone that it's Joe that wants us to boot push along and go quickly because he has a ball game to catch. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Next up, uh, Pooh uh, Poo loves honey. Get it? Because mm -hmm. it's honey hot. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. Pretty good. It's a window. Uh, deposits only. I, also, I love the photography. Like, look where they place that. Port of, the port yeah. Do you think somebody broke in to use that? It looks like somebody like pushed the in the fence. Hulk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's go time. Yeah. Joe, you've often uh, at, at airports how they have the Rocky Mountain Fudge Factory. You often dare me to go in and say, hey, you guys accept deposits? Yeah. <laughs> and then say, uh, no, seriously, where is the bathroom? Um, but I haven't well, done that one yet. You haven't done it yet. Will you do it someday? Sure. Yeah. I'm going to be on your birthday. There's one in there's one in the Minneapolis airport. That, okay. That's the one we got to do. In January. Right. Yeah, in January. All right. Um, all right. What else is here? Now serving numbers one through two. This is great. <laughs> honey, honey huts. Fantastic. Like, yes. Oh, they got a bunch of Nick Prewers down there coming up with these. These are great <laughs> jokes. <laughs> yeah. I wondered if they had like a writing staff to come up with these or is it just like one funny guy on the staff that, you know, I, hey, I got a new one, guys. Um, Angie in Nova Scotia said, so after this one, she said, as a bonus, I've also included some local encouraging dumpsters and encouraging dumpsters is capitalized because I think that might be the new thing. If, mm. I don't know if this is a thing or this is just a Nova Scotia thing, but she goes, uh, remember, if a dumpster can have a positive outlook on life, so can you. So they have these dumpsters there that have positive outlooks. Stay in school. Thought that was nice. Mm -hmm. Say no to drugs. I don't think they're being funny. I think they're like trying no. to like, yeah. They're at schools probably, yeah. Yeah. Seize the day, drive to arrive. I don't mm -hmm. know. Does this have legs? Could we do like, maybe it's like motivational dumpsters? Uh, I think, how about, how about like the Mad Magazine style, motivational dumpsters we'd like to see. Oh. Yeah. You know, and then we get to Photoshop them in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, a couple more. Never give up. And then I think this is my, no, enjoy life. This next one's my favorite one. Nope. Next one's my favorite. <laughs> Support our troops is a nice one, though. Uh, this is my favorite. Nope. There's more. Believe you can. Wow. Yeah. This is live, laugh, love. There's my <laughs> oh, live, yes. laugh, love. Like yep. you're at an Airbnb somewhere. <laughs> yep. wow. In that so order. Th thank you, uh, Angie, George, and Steve for the submissions. If you come across the port of punnies, email me, take pictures, and send them to me, joe at foundfootagefest.com. All right. Um, I have one more nice, nice thing. Oh, one okay. more nice thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Tim, so who does our uh, 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 Daniel Songer, the baffling non-joke from Daniel Songer. I didn't do one today because he also sent this one. I'm going to do it next week. Um, but uh, do you remember the, the cloud telekinesis guy, the guy who looked up at the clouds and yeah. would say, cloud disappear, cloud disappear, cloud. And he tried to make them disappear or he tries to make them do something with his mind and enchanting. Uh, Tim invented a brand new segment. And it's called This Week Includes. Clued, become a square shape, Clued. Clued, become a square shape, Clued. Clued, change into a square shape, Clued. Clued, become a square shape, Clued. Cleared, become a square shape, cleared. Cleared, become a square shape, cleared. 
Cleared, become a square shape, cleared. Cleared, become a square shape, cleared. Cleared. Be Did you hear that last one? It was like, cleared. Cleared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see if that one has legs. I, uh, I got to like confess, it. I called the episode where he debuted that clear disappear because that's what I thought he was saying. Clear disappear. But apparently it's just his weird way of saying cloud is yep. clear. Clear. Yep. Clued. Clued. Wow. I'm it's just now clear. realizing that. So uh, yeah. apologies, you, have, but, yeah. you have to watch the full five minute video to really. Yeah. Yeah. To get to, to well, let that sink in. To that end, we're going to go out on a remix of the original video um, that Liz sent in. Um, but uh, oh, that's nice things. we got to play the outro legally by law. Uh, no. OK. But not cyber videos. We don't have to play the outro by law on I, cyber videos. I right? didn't make the loss. Okay. Um, all right, just a couple quick it's announcements. Like, it's, those, it's those fat cats in Washington. Those, <laughs> yep, yep. Those bozos who we... Uh, the YouTube police. Um, well, so uh, we are in Kansas City on the 15th. Uh, or no, sorry, Lawrence, Kansas. We're playing Liberty Hall, one of our favorite venues. Uh, Chop and Steel, plus we're doing a Midwestern-themed found footage show right afterwards. And there's a DJ named DJ Hasselhoff. It's the guy who actually shot the documentary Chop and Steel. is going to be performing afterwards. That's going to be great. And then we're in Austin at Fantastic Fest. I don't know if they've announced the date, but we're going to be there the whole week. And I think Chop and Steel plays on September 29th. Or no, I don't know, whatever it is. It's it's that Tuesday of the festival. Uh, and then we're at, at another festival in Indianapolis in October. And we're in a festival in Seattle in October. So you can go to Chop and Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E dot -E -E com to see uh, all those dates when you can see the documentary they made about our news appearances. There's a brand new Bastard Tapes out now. That's our podcast hosted by uh, the uh, Tim Harrod, who, who provided the Cleud this week in Cleuds and uh, Songer. And he, uh, cult, he, he gathers terrible music from all across the world and puts them into themed shows. And for this one, he, he tried something new with this one. He, he asked Nick and I, we were telling him about this album by this guy named Buck Truck, who had an album called The Rappin' Trucker that we would listen to all the time. And he said, why don't you just walk me through Buck Truck? And so we, we listened to the whole album with him. And so we go through uh, from the first song to the last song, and we talk all about uh, the rap and trucker. And uh, so I think it's gonna be a new feature on uh, Tim's show. I shouldn't speak for him, but like, you know, somebody brings a new album in to, sh to show him. And Nick and I want this to be a regular series called Trucking Music, because Nick and I, you, we listen to a lot of trucking music. Like, yeah, the like truck stop firm... comedy, truck, truck, stop, truck stop music rack. Uh, they used to have a cassette tape rack, now it's a CD rack. How about you the know. truck stops here? That's the name of the, uh, the series. Yes, corner. I like it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we are aficionados on truck stops. So listen to the Bastard Tapes right now. Um, what else we got? Remo's are pre-orders. Yeah, they're, they're killing up. it. We've almost sold 500 Blu-rays of this uh, bonkers children's <laughs> movie that we first watched <laughs> at our friend Andrew's house at three in the morning uh, uh, in Denver. And uh, it's going nuts. We might sell out of these. So go to store.foundfootagefest.com, pick up your creating Rem Lazar Blu-rays, DVDs, and the September 13th digital downloads. That's the official release date. Um, George, you got something up here. Yeah, I got a phone call yesterday uh, from, yeah, from uh, Larry Mr. Pines Nasty. Uh. No, Larry Mr. Nasty Pines. That's right. Um, ask... First, he asked me if I could uh, come and videotape his show in L.A. on October 20th, but I had to explain we're here. But I wanted Melinda's to know, first of all, that he's emceeing a variety show at Los Palmas Theater, Hollywood, California, Thursday, October 20th at 11 a.m. And uh, if somebody's out there and wants to videotape it, I'm sure he'd be extremely videotape it, uh, film it in some way. He'd be very appreciative. He says he looks the same, but he has a uh, beard. <laughs> October 20th. Maybe I'll try to be out in LA for that. I would yeah, love he, to and he be said a cinematographer. He, he, he said he would definitely do a reading for you guys in character as Mr. Nasty. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to try and get up to LA October 20th. I'm putting it on my calendar now. 11 a.m. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, is that what it was? 11 a.m.? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, said oh, it's, gotta... he said it's 11 or 1. I'll let you know. But I figured 11. <laughs> I'll update if it's not 11. All right. I guess I'll have to set my alarm for this one. Okay. Um, 
Just real quick, we, we've been with the, the vanity plates, you know, you got us to our goal on Patreon. There's some controversy last week with the vanity plates, certain plates not available, certain people's lives objecting to those vanity plates. Oh, we yeah. will have a full update about this, including some, some more twists and turns in the saga next week. Stay tuned next week. So so wait, did we figure out a punishment for for Steve or like uh, what That's he has a, to we'll, do we'll, instead? We'll, we'll get to it next week. There are some suggestions, okay, some developments. Yeah, yes. okay. I got I got to get to this ball game. So uh, real quick, so talking squirrels, there, there were a couple setbacks, a couple hiccups with it. I think we're gonna push it back a little bit. Uh, but Dave did shoot the the raw footage for talking squirrels. It's gonna be our first ever non VHS related show or non media show. It's just gonna be about squirrels. It's gonna be our first foray into. Uh, I don't know, science? Is that what this is going to be about? Yeah, um, it's going to be a real scientific show. Squirrels are science, right? Uh, and squirrel, uh, uh, Dave, one time he held a squirrel and he has ferrets. So we figure he's as good a host as any for talking squirrels, where he just talks about squirrel news, squirrels uh, in the news. And squirrels, squirrels are science. Squirrels <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not uh, lobbying for Dave's job, but uh over the weekend, I was in Wisconsin. I can't explain the circumstances, but uh, you might say I was up close and personal with Whoa. at least one. Oh, you touched a squirrel. Maybe two squirrels. Yeah, this this guy was hanging out on me, and uh, a brother was hanging out on me uh, while I was uh, in Wisconsin. So, yeah. Wait, so do you That's have all I can now? say. Do you have That's rabies I can now say. because of that? Well, nope. okay. Well, let's see how uh, – I, I got I got some footage. So uh, uh, our friend Dina edited – uh, the Talking Squirrels episode, just some parts. There's still a lot of work to go on it, but here's just an excerpt from it. So, Nick, tell, tell me if you can do better. Okay. And food is very scarce. They've also been known to eat birds, bird eggs, snakes, which they're actually pretty good at fighting. In fact, I even found a video where it shows a snake fighting a squirrel, and some people were pretty entertained by it. I like how he presents the videos by putting two fingers up to, like, show... <laughs> <laughs> a squirrel and some people were pretty entertained by it but then he'll, this is what the show will be like see the time code there is just to show that it's still a work in progress right so you might want to watch out yeah <laughs> was that his uh saget commentary on there oh this I, might I be the best tell. show on the network <laughs> i think that I, I i bow down to the master here yeah hold on hold on there's uh let's okay. just finish off the clip here. Come here get over here right now you might want to watch out That's a heck of a <laughs> that's a heck of a fight if you ask me. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting things about squirrels behavior. They love to jump from tree to tree or they love to burrow. Okay, so that's just a little mm. sneak peek. Can you add can you add the lip smacks to that <laughs> during during the transitions? I was, you know, I wonder if we should workshop this. I wonder if like we should just like all watch it together and then like figure out what the notes should be because I was wondering like do we want a bit of music underneath him while he's talking? Do we want like this is Dave's music? baby? I, I think just go with his creative instincts on it. I don't want to have any notes. Well, yeah, okay, but like, yeah, I I, I want to make it good. I want to, yeah, I, want I know. to have you know, and and like Dave does not have a lot a lot of experience in TV production. So he I just want to know what the possibilities are. Like for those of you, know, you, this is your first episode watching. This is the VHS based channel where we <laughs> mostly talk about squirrels, license plates, and uh, porta potties. So yeah. uh, if you're just watching now, <laughs> the show's expanded. We, you know, we can't. Do you got it. to. Those you got to change. Go you got to evolve. Yes, but exactly. uh, our old favorites are back. Saturday morning cartoons third season premieres this Saturday. At 10 a.m. Eastern, Caitlin is back, Dr. Caitlin McGurk from the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library. We're watching, you know, we always like to start with those preview shows that they would play on Fridays before or the week before the new Saturday morning cartoon lineup. This is CBS 1985. Every random 80s celebrity that you can name is in this uh this preview show hosted by Rowdy Roddy Piper. You do not want to miss it. Set your alarms for 10 a.m. Eastern on uh, on Saturday. That's always the most fun one, too. I love that first one of the, of the season. 
Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good to be back. Um, all right. Yeah. EP mode. What are we going to do, Nick? You want to do Mr. I see Mr. Nasty here. What do you think? You it's an do idea. I, it was an idea. I don't know if we've watched that one yet, but yeah, let us know in the comments. If you have it, if you're a, a Patreon backer at the $10 level, we do a bonus show each week. What do you want it to be? We can watch anything uh, from our library you may have seen. Um, um, yeah, we're, we're going to go out on a, a remix of uh, by Liz of uh, Clued Disappear. Uh, and it's it's a good one. Uh, so until then, we'll be right back right after the right after these words. By the way, before I say my catchphrase, Liz has agreed to write the theme song of Talking Squirrels, too, which is working oh. out as we speak. Synergy. And, and this song you're about to hear. I've listened to it like a dozen times. It's so goddamn good. So nice work, Liz. And I can't wait to hear what she comes up with for Talking Squirrels. But here's the thing. If we had been prepared, we could have done better. Oh. Uh Make sure you check out Waiting for Wednesday. Uh, go to uh, donsparrow.bigcartel.com. Everybody's a puppet when they're dead. Content's under pressure. I just might blow. See you I'm next not ready week. for the wild thing. Bye. <laughs> Small cloud disappear. Clear, disappear, clear, disappear, clear, vanish, clear, disappear, clear, disappear, clear, disappear, clear, disappear, clear, disappear, clear, vanish. See, it is fading out. When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Got to sleep. Bye. That's it. That had it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In eight. My nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Triodal. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Paul said, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Yeah. Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.